In this video, I wanna show you how you would take images like this and create a really cool Vox style title. So I've got some basic images here. These could be AI generated images. It doesn't really matter. The first thing that I always do when I'm looking at any sort of animation is I really want to understand what it is that I'm trying to get across. So what is my end goal as far as what I'm actually trying to achieve. So the other thing I'm really also trying to listen to or understand in the script is what is the subject matter? So in this case, say for instance, this was all about New York, then that's what I'm trying to basically focus on through the elements that best tell that story or whatever it is that you've got in the script in the background. Now, obviously this is just an example, but I'm just kind of showing you how we would take those images and kind of make it into something interesting. So just for instance, I'm gonna create a new composition here. I'm then just gonna right click, create a new solid, and this color you can set to be whatever background color you want. In my case, I'm just using this color here if you wanna follow along exactly but that's the sort of just a starting point. Now, at this point, I like to try and, you know, drag in an image or use some of the elements that I've kind of collected here. So I'm kind of dragging them all in here onto into my scene. And I'm kind of looking at this thinking, okay, I need to try and create some consistency. So I've added in some black and white images here. Maybe I've got a color image here. Maybe I've got these little elements here. And at the moment they're reasonably close, but we need to try and tie them together by creating some sort of palette that we can kind of work with. I'm just gonna turn these other ones off because I don't need them right now. But with that background, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a tint. Now you can search for this up here and then basically all I'm doing is just changing the black to be sort of whatever color I want. For this, I'm going for sort of a red and sort of blue color palette. And you can also just dial that back if you want to kind of, you know, depending on the intensity that you're kind of going for. And then what I could do is I could use, say this like paper here, and I want to add a bit of texture. So not just the color, I want also to kind of use this as a bit of a, a sort of way of trying to tie the images together through some sort of consistency. So what I'm doing here is just going to highlight this here to sort of and drag this one down and I can sort of set this to be following that paper sort of layer. Now that I've kind of got that, if I then kind of scale this up or down, you can see that I'm kind of working within that, I'm kind of using that paper texture. I can also dial this up or down, something like that. Something else I'd also did just to kind of fill in the background a little bit here was I'm just gonna take my background layer and duplicate it and what I can do to this, if I add, I can search up here and generate just a basic grid. Now, if you set this to be like the width slider, you can drag down on the border here and maybe just scale this up. We just sort of get something that's very subtle. If you start with like that background color, I'm just adding something, you know, very sort of subtle here in the background. Something as basic as that just kind of gives it a little bit more interest. Now, what I want to do is if I turn on one of those other images here, for this one, for instance, maybe I want this one to sort of, you know, connect these two images together. So what I could do here is maybe move this one up. I'm going to move these two images down here. I'm just going to add a tint into this one. Um, but this time I'm going to use a blue sort of color and I can drag down on this if I maybe add a bit more contrast in there maybe something like that. And I want this to sort of sit more into that background image. Maybe looking at this one, it's not really sitting in the right spot. So I could move this even down to this part of my image. Maybe position this something like here, kind of works. If I turn on this one, I could move this one over here maybe make that one blue, maybe this one here, I feel like now it's kind of dominating that uh, background image too much. So what I'm gonna do is take that color palette from the back one and I'm sort of then gonna paste that over the top. And really what I'm trying to do is just create some sense of, you know, I wanna join these together to kind of create a bit of a collage. So that's not looking too bad. What I can also do here is start to think about if I want to make adjustments to the overall sort of layout here, say I want to add a bit of contrast, I'm starting to think about, 
you know, how I can add maybe a little bit of contrast here onto these images. And now we're starting to lose that little grid layer. So what I'm going to do is bring that up a little bit. I'm going to, with using shift and plus, I can then sort of scroll through my different blending modes to maybe get something that's sort of working a little bit better. Maybe even just scale this down to like one. That's looking quite good. I'm just going to take my adjustment here and maybe scale the brightness down slightly. And now I think it's a good point to now start sort of laying out my title because I want this to obviously be focused on the main title. We're sort of working from the back forward. You can start with the title, but in this case, what I've done is I've added some text in here and all I did for the text was I basically just created a new sort of text layer by dragging out a box. I then basically add in my text here. And what I'm going to do is come up to the character menu and just sort of scale down on this. Because I'm using that sort of backdrop here as a way to sort of bring that text through. I'm also just hitting T and I can scale down the opacity just to make it slightly transparent, just so we can kind of see through the background. We don't want to take away from it too much, but it's starting to look quite nice. I'm just simply using um, a Times New Roman font here. So it doesn't have to be anything special. This is really like just about sort of focusing on those, adding those elements in, creating a palette and then sort of blending them as best you can together. You can always go, like a little trick that I like to do is take some of these images and just add basically a blend or change the blending mode essentially. So I'm kind of messing around with that blending mode. Blending mode is, is one of those things that you're gonna use a lot when you do any sort of animation. And it's really good tool to understand, you know, how you can really use it to make images sort of sit better when they're layered on top of each other. I wanna add a few more elements here into the background. So I'm feeling that there's a lot of negative space here that I want to just sort of fill in. So what I can do is take that I've got these paper rips here. I could use those if I drag them into the background. I could say, take one down here with my mask tool. I could sort of select that. Might duplicate that, bring up the mask on that one, delete it, and then maybe bring in another one. So maybe grab like this one down here looks okay. Can sort of drag this one like that and then maybe with my rotation tool hitting w on my keyboard i could sort of position this looks quite interesting you can just hit this button here if you want to remove that uh, mask layer and then maybe scale this up slightly so i'm not holding shift i'm just basically lifting that or moving it up into the background i'm just going to bring this layer up because i want these to sort of sit to affect all of the layers underneath. I'm gonna take this little paper rip here in the background and maybe move that over here. And with both of those selected, I'm gonna cycle through my blending modes. Even something like that looks quite good. And then maybe a slight adjustment on this one. Don't want it to be too dominant. Now at the moment, the colors are starting to drift a little bit. You know, we're sort of working with quite a lot of colors here. So this is where we can sort of select one of these um, paper background. This is where I could select one of these paper backgrounds here and I could say, just add in a saturation. So I could go to the hue and saturation, change the hue of it to be more of a neutral color, or I could sort of warm it up slightly and then even just add a little bit of lightness, maybe copy that, paste it onto this background layer here desaturate that one maybe and just sort of lighten it up. Something like that's looking quite good. I now sort of feel like the color, I want to sort of, you know, we've got quite a strong sort of dominant color there for these colors, but I want it to sort of blend more into the background. So one way we could do that is by stepping the colors. So what I could do is come up here and basically use the ellipse tool and what I'm going to do is just have this fill sort of set to just something like that to start with. I'm going to basically scale up on this holding shift 
get rid of that stroke layer, maybe drag this down here. And then I can use shift and plus to sort of cycle through those different blending modes, maybe drag this up slightly. I'm creating a little bit of a subtle color palette here. In my original one, I went with something quite strong here to sort of blend that or create these little stepping points into the background. You know, here at the moment, the yellow is becoming quite dominant. So what I can do is kind of duplicate this, even scale this one down move it over here. But if I created another one and moved it over here, I could even make this one. Maybe remove the blending mode on that one and maybe make it more of this sort of blue, give it a bit more of a, maybe change the blending mode of that one. And then I feel like we need something a bit more subtle over on this side. So here I've added a bit of a um, sort of map effect. So simply all I did was I had like this image here of a map and I dragged this in here and just sort of reposition it. And then I'm just gonna take one of these paper rips here. So I'm gonna copy that, duplicate it and just move it over here. I want that image then to basically be set to use that as basically like a alpha map. So this is basically going to only see that map through that paper effect. Up here, I could take that tint effect and then add that to that image to sort of bring out that sort of color there. And what I want to do with this blue here is it feels still quite dominant. So I'm just gonna move this up because I want it to be a bit lighter just to sort of sit into that background a bit better. And I feel like we're getting to a place that's looking pretty good. So those sort of steps that I'm working through there is really important to understand because this is what, you know, separates, you know, good designs from like bad designs, essentially. There's lots of things that go into the design itself from the image choices to all those things. But I really just want to show you that all of these After Effects animations and things like that, the animation is always secondary to the design itself. So they are two elements, but you kind of need both in order to work. So for instance here, once I kind of had my design, then it was just a matter of then adding in a little bit of movement and animation. And it just makes, you know, kind of brings this whole thing to life. This is something that I talk a lot about in my Animation Pro course. We go a lot deeper into like After Effects, understanding more about the design aspect. This course is really aimed at people who are much more comfortable already using After Effects, but wanna understand how to actually create designs and animations that, you know, capture people's attention using just basically free assets that you can find online even with all of the AI generating tools that are available to us today, these skills are really important to know and understand. Even as the tools change, the principles themselves will never change. So you may be able to get faster creating these things, but it's really important to understand why you're doing certain things. Because moving forward, you're gonna be leveraging a lot of these tools to make your work even better. So if you have a really good understanding of what works and what doesn't, your work as a result by leveraging those tools is just gonna be a lot better than what other people can create using just those tools. So if you really wanna understand that process, then check out my Animation Pro course. I've had hundreds of students go through and get amazing results. There'll be a link down in the description where you can see all of the stuff that's included in that course. So one of the first things I added in here was a controller. So the way that I did that is I created a new null object and that's my null and then I can hit P on the keyboard and create a position keyframe and a scale keyframe. And if I link all of those layers, you can see here, you can get to that by toggling the modes and switches to that controller. Now, when I move that controller, that all of those layers are following that. The other little thing that I've done is added on motion blur. So they have that really nice motion blur to them. But basically all I've done here is created a scale that sort of starts in close at the text and then sort of zooms out. The text itself is just simply all I've done here is just added an opacity. So I hit T on the keyboard, create an opacity keyframe at say 50% and then sort of scale it up here to whatever you want. 
And then I've just got some other little texts that are adding animating out from that. Nothing too crazy. I've explained that in many videos before, basic text animation. Then from this point, as the camera's then zooming out, I'm bringing in some of those background elements. One thing I did notice here that when I was animating this, you want to sort of draw the eye into this title because I'm focusing on that title. So what I did was I found the background became a little bit sort of overwhelming. Basically just right click, create a new adjustment layer. And in that adjustment layer, what I did was I added a Gaussian blur. So again, I just animated the Gaussian blur so it had some blur. So it was basically blurred just to help sort of, you know, just to help for that text to sort of really stand out. I then animate this down to sort of zero here. So it kind of disappears. And then I also added in just a very light sort of hue and saturation and desaturate it. That just helps sort of bring more of this sort of um, the text, make it stand out better on that background. Something else you can also do to that text is you could just come up here and add a perspective drop shadow. So this will really help it stand out if you wanted to take it to that next level. You don't have to do that, but just something, you know, again, to really help that separation. Animation is all about guiding the viewer where you want them to be or what you want them to be focusing on, trying to relay the, the most important information in your scene. So right now that text is what I want people to be focusing on. So that's why my camera zoomed in. I'm bringing my camera back because I'm revealing or introducing new information into the background. Simply from there, I just have added in. So I've taken, say, my image here of this building. I've just created a position keyframe by hitting P, create a position keyframe, and then I move it down here out of sight. And so as the camera's moving back, they're just moving up. So very basic sort of position, very subtle movement. You don't need anything crazy to make your animations really stand out. Here, I've also just added something else that just to sort of add a bit of life into this, I've added in just some very subtle wiggle animations. So to do that, what, I, what I've done is if I say take one of these shape layers, so I've got my circle, say this one down here. If I go to the position property and I hold Option or Alt on my keyboard, I can click click on this little stopwatch and that will allow me to write an expression. I've added in a wiggle, open bracket, two comma eight, close bracket. Basically, it's just saying to it, how fast do you want it to move? So if I said 20, it's going to be moving very quickly, you can see and eight is how far do you want it to be moving. So how quickly and then how far. This was more really focusing on the design aspects of why I've done the choices that I've done. And if you want to understand a lot more about that process, then definitely check out my Animation Pro course. That's it for this video. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips and tricks you can use in your own videos. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you loved this video, then maybe consider subscribing. You can check out more videos just like this one over here on the side of the screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.